Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification bell in the upper right hand corner. Follow me on all forms of social media. Check me out at thedrummerguy.com and enjoy the following presentation. One, two, three. <clears throat> Hello. Hey, how's it going? Hey, good. How are you doing, Josh? I'm doing great. It's uh, great to be able to talk to you again. Right on. Oh, yeah. Always a pleasure. How's your tone, man? Oh, uh, it's actually better now. Uh, it's uh, going to take a little bit to heal up, but uh, uh, it, it, it was quite scary, but uh, I'm glad to be in a position where it's better. Oh, good. That's good to hear, man. Right on. Oh, totally. And uh, uh, thanks for asking about that. But uh, yeah, sure. it's, it's uh, great to be able to hear from you again. Uh, you, you know, it's been uh, quite the busy year for you, and it's uh, great to see so many great releases coming from you. And now, next Friday, some new Exhumed. Yeah, uh, you know, I like to stay busy for some reason. I don't know. I just, I guess if I'm not totally stressed out, I just don't feel alive anymore. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, well, you know, that that is a great thing, though. I mean, you know, it's just like there's so many uh, great projects that you are a part of now. And, you know, it's and with horror coming out next week, you know, it's just like it's, it's great to see that really old school exhumed sound coming back into the fold, you know, with uh, the last album being able to show off, you know, a, a more longer side of the band. I mean, it's great to see like a, an album that was just like around 25 minutes now. Yeah, I was actually afraid that Relapse wasn't going to accept it. <laughs> so we, we recorded three covers just to pad the album out to, to 30 minutes. And, uh, you know, I talked to him. I was like, well, just as long as you're okay contractually with calling it an album. I know it's kind of on the short side. But like, no, no, it's fine. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think it, it, everything you do, uh, I guess, is a reaction to something else, right? So, I mean, I think with the last Exhumed record with Death Revenge, you know, we kind of went and made the most elaborate record that we really could without, you know, kind of changing into a different band. And so, you know, now we're just pulling as far back the opposite way as we possibly can while still, you know, again, without turning into a different band. Yeah, and, you know, it's like, I, I love that Exhumed can do that. I mean, you know, it's just like, you can do these kind of things and it'll still have that same great sound to it. I mean, whether you're doing something like Death uh, Revenge or you're doing something like Horror, I mean, it still sounds like Exhumed, and I loved it for that. Well, thanks, man. You know, we, we've always kind of, I mean, even since the very beginning, you know, when I was a teenager or whatever, um, I pretty quickly just sort of honed in on the, the kind of like tonality that I guess resonated with me for death metal, you know? And we've always, you know, not exclusively relied on it, but it's always kind of been at the core of what we do. So whether we're playing, you know, slower tempos and more noty stuff or faster tempos and blurry power chords, like the tonal intervals are still kind of foundationally the same. So hopefully that creates some sort of you know, some sort of through line, you know, it's a, it's a weird point to be at where, you know, you're, you know, kind of trying hard to, to keep things sounding fresh and also strike a balance between, you know, not selling out or wimping out or whatever, you know, I mean, so that's, you know, we're, 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 we're trying, we're still working. <laughs> <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah. And, you know, it's just, it's, it, it's great to see like that uh, old school sound for Exhumed on this album. And, you know, it's just like uh, the aesthetics of it as well, too. I mean, it just brings up that, that great feeling, you know, like a kind of like that, that kind of like that eighties horror kind of feel going on as well. But, you know, just also that classic Exhumed sound as well. I mean, uh, like, how did you know what direction to go in with horror, for, you know, as, as far as, like, a lyrical content and the aesthetics? Um, I think, you know, uh, I, the way that I look at it is that it's all sort of, you know, for, for any record, I, I, it, all influences, it all influences each other, you know, if you have sort of longer, more elaborate songs and you need, you know, more elaborate art and, and more elaborate layout and so on and so forth. And then if you have something that, like this record that's really straightforward, you need something that is really direct, you know, like we wanted the, the artwork to just have one image to focus on, not like a bunch of stuff or a collage or whatever. It's just like one thing, because that's what the record does. <laughs> it just does one thing. And so it's kind of a way of, you know, so many musicians are, are really like focused on tiny details because they're excellent players, you know, and that's where 
virtuosity comes from is in the tiny details, whereas I'm sort of an okay guitar player, and so I, because I'm always looking at the, the, the bigger picture, like how everything's going to fit together with the lyrics, with the music, and, you know, once we had the first few songs written, um, you know, I think I just wanted to, to do something that was sort of more fun and, and loose lyrically and not have to, you know, do a bunch of, <laughs> a bunch of reading and note-taking like I did on the last album. And the music is sort of, you know, a little bit more fun and loose and and... I don't want to say lighthearted because it's really aggressive, but it doesn't have that sort of uh, burden of, of of being intellectual or being <laughs> nobody nobody could, could, nobody no one could confuse it with uh, anything intellectual. So I think the whole packaging reflects that. You know, it's like a throwback to a simpler time. Um, you know, throw back to more straightforward sound and, and everything else, and hopefully, you know, coming back to that sound now as I guess whatever grizzled veterans rather than fresh-faced kids. You know, hopefully, we have a new take on it and, and something interesting to say. You know, yeah, and that's totally the way that I see it too. You know, it's like I I do love the the last album for being so like intellectual and like learning so much about what's happened in history, but I can also go around and enjoy horror for that same uh, kind of reason you know just like uh, being able to just like sit down hear that aggressiveness hear you know that uh, great uh, gore sound that I uh, brought me into exhumed in the first place and, you know you know it's just like no matter what direction it goes in it feels like it is exhumed and you know this time around you know having like a 25 minute uh, album where it, you know it's just like it's it's straight to the point it's it's fun to listen to and I imagine the live show is just going to be incredible with that too being able to hear those songs live and it just it feels like it's the right album for exhumed in 2019 well, cool. I mean, it feel, you know, that's how it feels to us. So, I mean, it's always nice, you know, when you're making this shit, you're like, well, this is how we're feeling. Hopefully other people are feeling the same or, or, or you know, they're open to it or ready to pick up on it. And, you know, it was a lot of fun doing it. And, I mean, it was, you know, we built the recording studio ourselves and that was not really fun. <laughs> it was pretty stressful because we are over budget and, and, you know, behind schedule. But, in terms of actually recording the album itself, it was really fun and, and felt really natural and the songs were the same, you know, we, we, didn't, really, we didn't really overthink anything or, or, or analyze it too deeply, we just, you know, let it rip and, and here we are. So, um, with that in mind, I, I didn't realize that you guys actually uh, built a studio with that. I mean, uh, how, how did that all, that process begin and like, uh, how, how did that come to fruition like that? Um, it, it began completely unintentionally. Um, you know, at various times uh, in the band's history, people have floated these ideas to be like, "Oh, we should, you know, we should make our own merch." And I was like, "I don't want to make our own merch. It's a lot of fucking work." Like, well, who's going to send it all out in the mail? Who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? And then we ended up getting a screen printing press, and I was like, "All right, well, I guess we're making our own merch now." <laughs> Fuck. Um, which has actually been, you know, it's been very beneficial, you know, uh, on tour because obviously. It's more profitable for us if we make it, and you know, the more profit we make, the easier our lives are, and the more you know, more we can do this, which is the goal. Um, so, anyway, we had a screen printing shop, and then we had a rehearsal room, and then we were going to lose the screen printing shop, and we were recommended to move both into this new facility that is now our recording studio. But we moved in there, and it's like in an industrial area, and the the, the other tenants. Uh, actually, their businesses are open at night, which we didn't really realize before we moved in there. And so, like, yeah, this is not going to work, guys. It's so fucking loud. And by that time, we couldn't move back to where we were. Um, so we were just kind of stuck there. And, you know, we were looking into how much it would cost to soundproof the studio and so on and so forth. And in order for us to build a, a jam room, you know, I was like, well, this is already really fucking expensive. So... We have no way of really paying for this, but if we go one step further and build a recording studio, then we can get an advance from the label that will, you know, offset the construction costs. So that kind of became the, uh, that, that was sort of the reasoning. It was not like a master plan or anything like that. It was just sort of, a, well, these are the punches. We got to roll with it and you know, make the best out of what we can. And so it was, uh, you know, we started on January 1st and, took us three and a half months to, to build it and then we had like two weeks to record and it, it's you know it's a little bit different because obviously it's where we live and 
you know, you're trying to build a studio, you're trying to record a record, but then you have your, you got your wife, you got your dog, you got your job, you got your dad needs to go to the doctor, or whatever, you know, it's just like, it was, it was really kind of a, a lot of things to sort of push against, but now that it's done, I, I'm really hoping that the next record is going to be a lot more relaxed, you know? No, not to mention, uh, Pounder's first album was, came out during that time, too, you know, just you know, all of that <laughs> yeah. stuff going on at that time. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was kind of a crazy time. Um, you know, luckily with the Pounder stuff, uh, you know, we'd recorded it quite a while before. Um, so that was just kind of a waiting game on our part. And you know, we went out and did a few shows, but it wasn't like a, a full uh, month on tour or anything, you know, because the band's not at that stage. But yeah, it was, it was a lot of shit going on. There was people moving into town. There was people moving out of town. It was, you know, it just it was fucking nuts. <laughs> Well, I can definitely say with the Exhumed album, I mean, I think it definitely turned out for the best. I mean, you know, considering everything that happened, I imagine that, you know, uh, recording like a 25-minute album had to be such a relief rather than like doing like a 40, 50-minute long album after all of that happened. But, you know, with that at the same time, you know, it's just like it turned out the way that it, it, it should have. And yeah, just like you said, you know, just like after building a recording studio and stuff like that, hopefully every future release will just be a breeze now yeah that's what we're hoping you know um and i think you hit the nail on the head it really was it was a relief by the time i sat down and started tracking the guitars i was like you know i felt like i lost 10 pounds my shoulders kind of relaxed i was like oh, okay i know how to do this i don't know shit about drywall i don't know shit about like you know wiring up a fucking you know console or any of that stuff I know how to play these riffs, so I got that. <laughs> this is cool. This is, uh, you know, uh, my comfort zone. So, yeah, and it would have been impossible for us to do a record like Death Revenge, you know, with the with the parameters that we had. And so we we kind of knew what the record was going to be before we started building the studio, and that that enabled us, you know, to have some confidence that we could pull it off, you know, that we could maybe pull it off. So I think we did. <laughs> Yeah, and, you know, I'm just thinking about that, too. You know, I imagine something like uh, Utter Mutilation of Your Corpse is probably, like, the greatest feeling because it was only eight seconds to record. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just felt like with that song, I was like, well, we have all these songs that are, you know, a minute 20 or, you know, a minute 50, two minutes, 10 seconds. I was like, we should just go a whole hog. And I was, you know, I hadn't really, I haven't heard a lot of bands doing micro songs, you know, um, in, in a while. So I just thought it would be fun to to throw one out there we actually have a video of that song that's coming out on october 4th so <laughs> oh that's awesome i can't, I can't wait for that <laughs> it's, it's cheeky and fun you know oh totally yeah and you know and speaking of that like uh, with with uh, the videos that have come out so far it's like i love the aesthetics of it you know just like that vcr quality of horror style that's going on to it i mean i think that was such a great touch to be able to do that yeah like i said it's just nice to have everything sort of fit together you know the artwork the sound the lyrics the, the video you know it's all very much tied up in this sort of shock and schlock kind of you know direct to video never going to win an academy award but there's going to be like a certain group of weird degenerate mutants that love it so i mean it's like very much you know you could be describing our sound or you could be describing a shitty horror movie um so it's uh I, I think it all just fits together real nice, and, uh, and uh, we're stoked on it. So we, we've got a we've got some new production for the tour that even takes it one step further. Like you know, part of the stage is you're gonna be like you know you're, you're in the living room in the '90s, just like watching VHS and shit. So it should be pretty cute. Oh, that is so cool. And, you know, along with all that, too, you know, it's it's so great with everything coming to fruition with with horror. And the fact that you guys are going right back out there, too, and uh, doing an amazing tour with Gay Creeper that's coming up, who uh, has an amazing album that's coming out as well, too. You know, it's just like it's perfect timing to see you guys uh, touring together as much as you are coming up. Yeah, I, th I think it's a really nice combination because, um, you know, Gay Creeper obviously are... You know, a, a much younger band than we are, um, but they've really accomplished a lot. And they've got a, a really justifiably excellent buzz. So, you know, uh, hopefully, the hope is that Gate Creeper will bring out some younger kids that may have heard of Exhumed, but you know, they're they're kind of caught up listening to newer bands, and we'll also bring out some older heads that maybe are 
caught up listening to older bands that have heard of Gatekeeper, but they're like, who are these new guys? And then, you know, they'll see them and go, oh, shit, this rules. And hopefully their audience will be like, who are these old guys? And then, you know, they'll see us and hopefully like it, and it's a win-win, you know? So, yeah, I think it's a great lineup, and uh, Necrot from Oakland is, you know, one of my favorite of the new generation, or whatever you want to call it, of, of death metal bands, and they're also from the Bay Area, so it ties in really nicely, and yeah, it should be a killer tour. Yeah, that is just a solid package from start to finish. You know, it's like, uh, you know, it's not three of the same bands going on on tour together, but they fit so perfectly well into one night. And yeah, Necrot rules. The, uh, the new Gay Creeper is just awesome. And you know, being able to tour behind something like Horror, I mean, that just feels like it's going to be like a perfect album to be able to go out and tour behind and really show things off. I mean, when that comes here to Minneapolis, I mean, I'm going to do everything I can to make it there because it just seems like an absolutely solid. A bill I can't miss. Awesome. Well, I, I hope you make it out. We'll uh, hang out, we'll have a beer, and uh, have a laugh. It should be good. Oh, totally. It's been it's been way too long since I've seen you guys. So yeah, I mean, you know, with with this coming out, and you know, just again with like uh, the the horror. Uh, being able to provide that for this year. I mean, I can't wait to see what the stage show is going to be like. You know, it's just like every time I see you guys, it's such a great, fun show that I I just remember <laughs> always, and I can't wait to see what's next. Well, cool. Yeah, we, we have a couple new bits, uh, you know, and of course, like some returning stuff as well. You know, it's a little bit, uh, uh, Dr. Filthy, our mascot, has always come up with various shenanigans. Um, you know, to me, it's almost like, He's like a death metal, like Buster Keaton or whatever. <laughs> like, it's very much from the sort of vaudeville, silent movie kind of era of, like, funny side gags and, you know, but with a lot of sharks and chainsaws and blood spray and stuff like that. So, uh, I think it's going to bring something to the table that reflects, you know, us as people because we're all pretty upbeat, like, dudes. We laugh a lot. We don't sit around with our arms folded and, you know, <laughs> talk about horrible things. We we usually just fucking cracking jokes and shit and cutting farts. So <laughs> I think it's a nice, uh, it's a nice kind of, uh, it's a nice break from some of the metal that's so over the top and serious because I, 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 you know, it's great when the band is brilliant, but you know, when the band is merely good, then it kind of wears on me pretty quickly. Oh, totally. And, you know, it's just like the the world is serious enough. And, you know, there's <laughs> always, uh, I mean, there's always serious bands that do put out such great music. But when you're able to have a lot of fun with it, you know, whether aesthetically or just the members of the band just like to have fun and, you know, just not take life so seriously. I think it always makes for a better live show and it makes for a more personal band that way, too. Yeah, you know, I mean, I think we, I, I like to, to know that a band is, performing and is enjoying what they do. You know, they're not, you know, and they're not doing you a fucking favor by showing up and gracing you with their presence. Like, they, this is, they're musicians, they're performers. This is what they want to be doing, you know? And, uh, you know, and you're right, as far as the seriousness in the world, you know, when we did Necrocracy, it was quite a, quite a serious album. And, you know, obviously very political. And now the situation in this country is, is so much worse. And I was like, God, maybe it's time to revisit this. And I was like, you know, I just don't want to let fucking the president and all his fucking stupid shitbag buddies, like, I just want them to suck the air out of everything. But like, they're already sucking enough air out of everybody's fucking life. Like, I'm not going to give them my record, too. Like, fuck that. I'm just going to have fun and sing about splatter zombies and, you know, <laughs> leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, it's like, I love Nick Ocracy. See, you know, I, I love that album, but I also love horror for that fact, too. You know, just, like, for, for different reasons, but still being exhumed. But I love the fact, you know, it's like, I know you have it in you to be able to write a more politically driven, exhumed album again, but I love the fact that you went, no, we really don't need that right now. We need some more fun. We need some, you know, an album to like uh, really enjoy and not just like have to overthink and, you know, just like uh, constant, constantly be a reminder of the political state of the world where instead, you know, just uh, talk about killing people for 25 minutes in different ways. You know, it's like, I think that's a great way to go about it. Absolutely. fucking It's like, you know, we... Well, the last tour that we did when we were out with Revocation, we we brought the song Necrocracy back in the set, and I have, you know, an intro, you know, fuck Trump, fuck Mike and Pence, Mitch McConnell, and also, you know, Chuck Schumer and Nancy Pelosi on the lower level of people who should get fucked, but, you know, anyway, and uh, I was like, all right, so we can do, we have our thing, we, we said our people know where we stand, cool, like, now let's just get on and play rock and roll and not fucking 
<laughs> not let this, not let this get dominated by you know the same fucking bullshit that every you know Thanksgiving dinner with your fucking family or your water cooler conversation at your fucking work or whatever. It's like enough, fuck you guys. You don't get everything. <laughs> 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 oh, it, you know, that that can be so true, too. And yeah, again, that's what makes me so excited about what's going to be happening on this upcoming tour for that reason. You know, it's just like because of the way the world is right now, people are going to need a night to just forget all those problems and just hear some great death metal in so many different ways. And, you know, between Exune, between Gay Creeper and between Necrot, I mean, it, it's such a perfect bill. And I really hope as many people go out to this as they can, you know, like uh, in some conditions, whether permitting like uh, i know you guys are coming around here in november so that could be the start of like blizzards and stuff around here but i mean you know right. permitting you know it's like it people really got to come out for a night like this because we all need it i i totally agree man i hope uh, i hope everybody comes out and i hope you know we have a couple we have a couple days where we're playing in the same city the same night as king diamond i'm like oh all right well that's not good but otherwise you know people have no excuse <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, di I didn't realize that was the case, you know, it's just like a, you know, it's like, I love King Diamond too, and you know, like, uh, seeing him live was, uh, uh, a few years back was one of my favorite shows, but you know, it's just... Uh, I want to be able to see you guys, you know, it's just like, I, I, I know it's just going to be like a really fun night rather than just like a, you know, a powerful night. I want a fun night. I want to be able to have some laughs. I want to be able to see like uh, all the antics that Exum is going to be up to. And I haven't seen Gate Creeper live yet and I haven't seen Necrot in quite a while. So I think there's every reason for me to be able to go out and do that. All right. Well, I'm going to, I'll hold you to it. I'll text you when we're in town. Oh, perfect. And you know, I think with that, I think that's a, a great way to be able to to end this uh thank you so much again for uh, taking this time to be able to talk about everything going on in your world right now uh including horror which is coming out next friday i love this album it's one of my favorite albums of the year and with that since uh we didn't get the chance to be able to talk about it earlier in the year pounder rules i love that album ever since uh i was gracious enough to get that album from you and i just i love seeing that side of you that's easily one of my favorite albums of the year as well and it's just great to see how busy you are with all of your musical endeavors and you know just like seeing how different they can all be but they're all very you and it's just so cool to see that oh thanks man yeah i mean i i, I really want to make sure that you know, every project is just able to sort of stand on its own and, and be its own thing rather than, you know, uh, I love, you know, Paul Speckman, but, you know, Master and Abomination and Death Strike are all, they're all pretty close, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, uh, one's a Gala Apple, one's a Fuji Apple, one's a Macintosh Apple, but they're all still apples. And I'm trying to, you know, hopefully, you know, one's, each band is sort of a whole other world from the other. And, you know, obviously all still stuff that I dig and, and I'm excited about and I believe in. And, you know, I've been listening to New Wave of British Heavy Metal for a really long time, like obsessively. So the Powder record was a long time coming and we're going to be recording uh, some new stuff here in the next several days. And uh, hopefully we'll uh, be unleashing that upon folks in a relatively near future. Oh, that's so great to hear that. I mean, yeah, any any new Pounder, any new Exhumed, uh, you know, whenever uh, Gruesome starts really something or Expulsion, you know, it's like I'm always excited to see what's going to be going on in your world. And, you know, like uh, whether it's touring, whether it's new projects, it's always great to be able to talk to you and, you know, just hear what's going on in your world right now. Well, thanks. Man. I appreciate it. I appreciate the support. It's killer.